Sometimes, when I make a great effort, I can remember her scent, the sweetness of her breath. Serena. Serena? Why can't I see you more clearly? Why can't I even remember? This was taken on that crisp winter night at our mutual friend's hunting lodge. We came back indoors laughing, giddy as teenagers. It was truly like an enchanted time, like we were in a magic circle where no sorrow or pain could touch us. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. My love. The furniture came with the cabin. Considering how off the beaten path this place is, that helped make up our mind. Sometimes she would brush her leg against mine under the table when we were eating. A curious, sensual thrill. The table is worn but sturdy, just like our relationship was is. We just don't know anymore. Our dining table. Quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. And there were many more to come. This one wobbles. I always meant to do something about that, but somehow never got around to it. This used to be her favorite spot. She used to sit here, put her legs on the table, lean back, and just give me one of her smiles. Those effervescent, incandescent smiles. Once, we dragged these chairs out to the lake and scrubbed off all the dust and grime of years. That was a long time ago. For all the charm of furniture like this. Something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. One of a matching pair. Obviously. There was a piece of gum stuck to the underside of this chair back when we bought this place. We just left it there. So many afternoons spent in this armchair. Come sit with me. I want to talk. And cuddle. What did we talk about? Damn this fallible memory of mine. The most comfortable spot in the cabin. Well, along with the bed, of course. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now. Putting her hand under my shirt. Of course, we made love here, too. There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. The most comfortable spot in the cabin, well, along with the bed, of course. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now, putting her hand under my shirt. Sharing meals with a good red wine was one of the great pleasures in our relationship, especially in the intimacy of this cabin. We had such a wonderful time dining in this cabin. Serena loved to experiment with her cooking. Truth be told, not all the cooking she did was a resounding success. We agreed to never attempt doing ravioli again. You silly dolt. Here, give me that. Don't be such a child. I should probably eat. Can't remember the last time I ate. Yet, I don't feel hungry. I have more pressing things on my mind right now than culinary exploits. So much wisdom and happiness in this bookcase. My life would have been much poorer without all this. The smell of old books is intoxicating. What happens to wood pulp as it ages gives it that distinctive vanilla smell. I loved it when we took down one of my favorites and curled up on the bed to read together as the wind howled outside on cold winter nights. Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too.
this window never got much attention. Then again, the view isn't nearly as spectacular. <laughs> Priorities, right? I guess it's covered with grease and grime from cooking, mostly. There's probably nothing out there that I want to see, anyway. All the stuff I care about is inside. Well, except for Serena. I can make out nothing through this window. No, I don't want to leave right now. There's still something for me in here. She made this with her own hands. She was really good. Look what I made, hun. in case we ever need to sweep something under the carpet. See the pattern of yellow squares? It's from this rug I remembered from my nursery. I must have been like three or four, but it always stuck with me. And no trap door under there. Just more creaky floor. I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there when it was my turn to tidy up. Come, love, with peace in your heart, said Niav of the ice blue eyes. Hmm. Blue eyes. It's based on an Irish folktale. Warrior poet Oshin goes to Tirnanog, a Celtic otherworld known as the Land of Youth and Promise. Niav is of the Fey folk, the fair ones, fairies, weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. Something draws me to this trunk. Is it the memories locked within? Or something else? We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but I can't help thinking there's something of importance inside. They prevent my blood pressure from skyrocketing. Doctor's orders. And Serena's. I'm generally not fond of taking medication. I find it hard to believe ingesting a few chemicals will do me much good in the long run. Don't forget your pill, hun. I know you'd rather not, but you know it's for the best. Beta blockers. I have high blood pressure. I'm only supposed to take these before meals. Not a big fan of them. They do tend to alleviate my headaches, though. Hers. I used it, too, when shaving. There's only an outhouse, and for some reason, whoever erected the rickety thing didn't think to include wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. So, <laughs> this came in handy. <laughs> Should I dust for fingerprints? I might if I were in a detective story. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. There's a strand of blonde hair in the comb. Yes, blonde hair like sun rays. I'm remembering. What's wrong with my memory? Did I have a stroke? Hmm. Hmm. She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. Nor some of her other personal items. These keys are for the cabin and the car. If the keys are here, does she have her spare? I should probably stay here in case she doesn't. Did she even have her own spare? We also have a key for the outhouse, but can't be bothered to keep it anywhere other than under that rock next to the thing. No one comes here anyway. Dearest, how do I say any of this? I like your way with words, but if I don't write this, I don't know what I'll do. My life feels so unreal now, dreamlike, but wonderfully so. Let me try, even if clumsily. The hours I spent with you when we last met are precious to me. I was so lost such a short time ago. Everything seemed drained of color and feeling. I think we were meant to find each other, to bring meaning to our lives again, make sense of the confusion shrouding both of us. 
When we stepped into the crystal silence of the snowy woods, away from the chatter of the guests, all nature seemed expectant, as if holding its breath, witnessing a rare moment of something infinitely better than what life in the ordinary run of things has to offer. Do you remember how the light crust of the snow glittered in the reflected light of the country house? How the copse of trees in which we walked was haloed with a magical aura? I felt the chill of the night air, and you opened your coat and enfolded me in your arms, and we hugged tight, sharing the warmth, sharing the only thing any of us have to share on this earth when you think about it. And then you toppled us on the snow, you devil. We laughed and rolled around, my head already spinning from the wine and crisp pure night air and the stillness all around. We lay back and I guess when I realized what I was seeing. The luminous starscape, like a vast velvet cloth sprinkled with powdered sugar, like it can only be seen in the countryside. I had tears in my eyes when I turned to you and we kissed, and it felt like the only moment in all of time, or outside time, and ours was the only spark that could ignite the universe. You gave me these moments. You complete me in ways I never knew to dream of. Let me be the one who makes sense of the confusion whenever you feel lost again. We can make our own world against the rest of the world if need be. Together we can silence all the demons, heal all the wounds. I love you. In eternity yours, Serena. It's been so long since I said her name out loud. I think that's the moment I fell in love with her, when she told me the soothing sound of her name. It's a beautiful day, though there's an unnatural calm surrounding the area. I've always loved the hazy afternoon shades of this place. It's deep into summer, so there's a few hours left until it gets dark. The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. There's a crack in this window from a tantrum she threw some time ago. It wasn't the only thing she threw. Not exactly perfect soundproofing. The sunlight can be confusing, oppressive, as if pregnant with some ill omen. Or is the stress finally catching up with me? The clock is a trophy from our flea market adventures. Chalk this particular purchase up to every cabin needs one. The ticking begins to feel homey after a while. The first night was a nightmare, though. Time never mattered much to us while we were hiding from the rest of the world here. As long as we were together and happy. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. She was special. Contradictory. She didn't mind these. Actually, I think she was into them too. That looks interesting. We can always try it. I read it for the articles, of course. Like that one by... the guy. That one about the... thing. I needed some incentive to go check the mailbox from time to time. It's some way through the woods. Something good left in this world. They still make covers like this. Erotic. Not obscene. Unlike its sibling, this lamp would last for months. We brought the lamps with us when we got this place all those years ago. They were from a garage sale. Our refuge from the world. A place sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was. The furniture came with the cabin, but the bed clothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury, but without her, there are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. I feel too restless to sleep right now. For some reason, light bulbs wouldn't last long in this lamp. I never looked into it. Two days, three days tops, and BAM! A brand new light bulb would burn out. Whenever her lamp didn't work, Serena would come by my side to read. A few moments later, she would lay her head down on my chest and fall asleep. 
The only reason this lampshade gathered less dust than the other one was that we had to keep putting new bulbs in this one. Because of a wiring problem, or whatever, this one always starts smelling sharply of metal after being on for a while. She adored all things of nature. I remember her long walks out in the woods. Curiously, we never brought many plants inside the cabin. We were surrounded by so many outside, I guess we were saturated by them. At least I was. Maybe I should have let her bring some plants inside. She liked them a lot. A plant is a plant. Beautiful to some, boring to others. They say these things are alive. If they are, it must be a horrible existence, confined in their own silent, dark world. She is fairly religious, not me. I'm the cold and cynical bastard. But I don't remember that ever being an issue between us. She always thought our relationship was a blessing. <sighs> God, how I miss her. <laughs> no longer the cynical asshole, I guess. Her faith came as a surprise to me. She was never prudish about sex, so I just didn't expect it. I guess people simply aren't that predictable. No, I don't want to read right now. Especially not a Bible. Quite a large armoire for our admittedly Spartan needs. She uses most of it. We all have our skeletons in the closet, but not Serena. She was perfect. I'm not sure why, but I don't feel like opening it. The sole thought of it drains what little energy I have left in me.